was mobbing with it. Prayer call, honey hood movements. You know what it is. We're getting it in again. Once again, another weekend. You feel me? Uh, what's today? Saturday. This is going to be Fairfield in Vallejo, California, man. Like I said, until these quarantines and these lockdowns, they let us up, man. We're going to continue to do what we're doing. We're going to continue to getting it in. In the Lord's name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for another day, another blessing. You know what I'm saying? It isn't us who woke up. It is you who woke us up and making sure that we honor your name and give you praise in Jesus' name. So, yeah, today will be, excuse me, today is going to be Fairfield, California, Vallejo, California. We're going up. You feel me? Um, I'll give everybody about 10 minutes. I will post tomorrow. I forgot to post the one today. Um, I am taking a fast off of social media, but I will continue to do the prayer walks. But as far as being on social media during the lockdown and everything we got going on, I'm trying to take the time uh, to truly study the word, to truly get closer to the Father and everything that God is speaking to me on uh as far as you know what direction to take after the prayer walks is over um you know just trying to take this time and utilize it and be wise about you know when we got the opportunities to grow closer to the father i'm trying to do so you feel me so yeah i ain't been on uh i haven't been on the uh, social media platforms like that so my apologies for not posting earlier but i would definitely post now from now on to make sure during the day that everybody remembers because I'm pretty sure individuals forgot. You feel me? But we are going to get it in. Give everybody a few more minutes to jump in this G thing. Like, uh, share this if you can. You feel me? Who's ever, uh, who's ever out there? Like I said, I, I definitely forgot to post this to make sure people... Excuse me, remember, man, but it is what it is. We're going to go in. Let me see. Uh, four more minutes, and then we're going to get it in. Praying everybody is blessed through this time. Praying that you are growing closer to the Father, um, growing closer with your family. In Jesus' name. And just, uh, you know, praying that you take this time and utilize it, that you wise, you know, on the time that the Father was giving us uh, to be at home, to be stationary, you know what I'm saying, with our loved ones. Um, let's be intentional with everything he has given us in Jesus' name. Let's make sure that we are honoring him and giving him the praise that he deserves. So we are definitely going to be getting it in. Once again, Fairfield, California, and Vallejo, California, we'll be praying over them cities. Like I said, these, these prayer walks are going to be postponed. They are not going to be um, forgot about at all. We will pick up whatever date this lockdown is done with. We will pick up from there, and then we will basically just rotate whatever prayer walks that we had to postpone to the end of the year after the last prayer walk. Um so we are going to definitely be busy through the year and going on into the next year. So praise God for that. Praise God for the opportunity to continue to be busy with ministry um, and him utilizing us and this ministry to go throughout the world and the United States into these neighborhoods and pray for the community um, to make sure that we are also proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to individuals who need it. Um, and just purely just getting it in, man, you know, for the unity in the body of Christ. So let's make sure that we are going forth with that as well. Um, definitely. Thank the Lord, man. But yeah, I don't know if anyone else is fasting. I chose to fast during this time to definitely take advantage, full advantage of the time that we are going to be down um, and grow closer to the Lord. You feel me? And uh, just hear his voice more and just everything he's doing. And thank the Lord for what he has going on, you know, 
with the body of Christ and just everybody in it. You feel me? Take this time to truly grow closer to, you know, the Lord and, you know, just utilize it. Man, be intentional with the time that he has given us. Let us not grow weary in these times. Let our faith be strong. You feel me? Let us continue to grow closer. You know what I'm saying? Let us fellowship more. You know? Let, let us get it in. But yeah, so once again, Vallejo, California, Fairfield, California, we will be getting it in. We will definitely be praying uh, over these communities that we couldn't make it to physically. We will definitely be making sure that we pray over them and be thankful uh, for the opportunity to do so. You know, we could be doing anything else right now. And the Lord has given us an opportunity to lift up two cities right now in prayer. Um, we would be there physically, but we can't because the lockdown. So we're going to be there spiritually. And we know the Lord is going to definitely show up. You feel what I'm saying? So we don't got a doubt in our minds. Praying over these communities on what the Lord can do. Um, and also, yes, we would definitely uh, keep your girlfriend in prayer. You feel me? Um, that she feels better soon. Uh, prayerfully, you guys are seeking the right steps, uh, you know, for courting each other and moving on into marriage when the Lord says it's uh, so. I always encourage that uh, to make sure that's truly what we should be doing in the body of Christ uh, is making sure that we are courting each other and that we are looking forward on to marriage, not necessarily just dating to find the right man or the right female, but to find a husband and find a wife. So I encourage that. Definitely keep her in prayer, though. Um, thank the Lord, man, for another day that we get to wake up and we get to truly... Uh, just be here, man, and, and be thankful for the time that he has given us. So let's see. We're going to get this thing started. Um, yes, it's 740. If you guys would like to drop your prayer request as well, that's what this is for. Um, any fellowship that you guys may have, you can drop that as well. You know what I'm saying? If you're... If your um, church or they're doing live streams, you can drop that as well. If you got any Bible studies that you're doing, you're more than welcome to drop that as well. Uh, we're going to get it into prayer over this. These two cities, though, man, we're going to get it in. Excuse me, it's going to be uh, Vallejo, California, and Fairfield, California. j Rock was mobbing. We just now about to get it in. You tap right in, right tongue. Uh, so we're going to go up in prayer. In Jesus' name, for Vallejo, California, and for Fairfield, California, we are thankful that we have the opportunity to do so. We can't be there physically, but we'll definitely be there spiritually. So let's definitely get it in, um, and let's be mindful and intentional of this live. You can drop your prayer requests, your fellowships, your church live streams, whatever it may be. You feel me? A hundred hoods, if nobody was informed, we are postponing the walks until... The lockdown is over. Uh, my apologies once again. I will post for tomorrow, but I've been taking a fast from the social media platforms during these times. I will still do the prayer calls during the weekends. Um, so I will definitely post tomorrow as far as uh, reminding everybody. I forgot to today, um, but I've been trying to take this fast serious, really just, uh, you know, the next 30 days be fasting from social media, um, you know, just even food, uh, you know, TV, just everything that could become a distraction or maybe was a distraction that I wasn't seeing before and just taking the time to spend as much time as I can with the Father, man. So let's get it in. Let's get up in prayer for, uh, once again, Vallejo, California, and Fairfield, California. You feel me? Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord, just asking you for your mercy and grace, Lord. We ask uh, for your forgiveness of our sins, Lord, and just confessing them to you. Uh, forgive us, Lord, if we have dishonored your name or wronged your people in any way. We lift up Fairfield, California, and Vallejo, California. We lift them cities up to you right now, Lord, for you know exactly what, that's, what them cities need, Lord. Not only do they need the gospel, um, they need your mercy and your grace, Lord, for them cities have been oppressed, you know, gang violence, uh, you know, drugs, prostitution, anything that you know, definitely uh, the, the enemy is trying to use to distract the lost is what's going on. Uh, you know, the flesh, the sinful nature of our flesh, you know, and desiring to uh, cater to itself, Lord. So we just pray against that. We definitely pray that we can't be there physically, so we'll be there spiritually. And that your love and whatever seeds that we can plant through prayer will fall on good soil, Lord. 
and that we are understanding, Lord, that where we are gathered in prayer, Lord, that you will definitely hear us and you can heal our land if we humble ourselves and confess our sins, Lord. And that's what we are doing right now, Lord. We are coming before you understanding that we need your help. We need your guidance. We need you to navigate us through these times. So we are just coming up before you right now, Lord, and continuing to pray over these cities and these communities that we can't make it to physically because you have given us a vision, Lord. As far as Hog My Ministries, you gave us a vision and you gave us a ministry um, mission that you wanted us to accomplish. So we are not going to not accomplish that. And until we can get there physically, we will be there spiritually and we'll continue to lift these cities up in prayer. Um, it's the hundred hoods, Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to go into a hundred neighborhoods and pray over the community, show the unity in the body of Christ, but as well as proclaim the gospel of what, who you are and what you have done for us, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. I pray for these cities right now, Lord, um, that they are just taking heed to the times right now, Lord, that this is a wake up call, that this is the warning before destruction that the loss within these communities and these cities will take heed to the seeds that have already been planted by the body of Christ who was already in these cities and the communities, the, the street evangelist who has already been out there truly proclaiming the gospel and praying over the communities. Lord, I just uh, pray for them right now that you continue to strengthen them up, continue to build their faith, their endurance and their patience to these times as well. Um, we thank you for this opportunity. Once again, we could be doing anything else right now, Lord, but we are here with you. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you just in all for what you are doing for us during these times. I pray for the unity in the body of Christ that it grows stronger. I pray that everyone's faith, Lord, is firm in your word and firm in the promises that you have given us as your children. I pray for the lost, Lord, that they take heed to what is going on in these times, Lord, that you are the only one who can save us, Lord. When it comes to salvation, you are the only way on to salvation. There is no other way but you, Jesus. And we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And we truly are thankful to be not only in your family and in the body, Lord, but just being able to pray over these communities, just being able to have the opportunity to do so. We could be doing anything else right now, Lord, but you have ordained us a position to be right where we are right now and continue to go to war with the enemy, continue to go to battle with darkness. No matter if we're there physically, we can be there spiritually. So I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to pray over the cities of Vallejo, California and Fairfield, California. Lord, we truly thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Um, this this prayer prayer call isn't just for the cities. This is for individuals to drop um, their prayer requests. This is for individuals to um, drop your, your your fellowship links as far as with Bible studies. Uh, if your church is live streaming Sundays, whatever it may be, you know, let's not just make this about the hundred hoods movement. This isn't about our name. This is about the the name of Jesus Christ, you feel me, in the gospel, the only one who can save us is Jesus. So we, we want to definitely open the opportunity up for other individuals for prayer, uh, Bible study links, you know, um, just if your church is live streaming service, building relationships with brothers and sisters, that's truly what this is about. This isn't just about the Hundred Hoods prayer call. Oh, man, but yeah, definitely, I'm praying that everybody is taking this time wisely. Like I said, um, God had put it on my heart to make sure that um that I fast uh from social media. So my apologies today without uh, remembering to post about the prayer call. Um I need to be more mindful of that, even though I'm fasting, that uh this is something I talk with the Lord about that I'll still do the prayer calls, but I will be definitely off of social media platforms. So if you're trying to get a hold of me on there, you know my apologies. I will definitely be off of this until the end of the month. But I will still be doing the prayer calls. Um, if there's anybody in here who doesn't know the Father and would like to get to know who Jesus is, let's uh, give them the opportunity to do so. Um, so drop your prayer requests, drop your uh, Bible study links, your church links, whatever it may be. Um, and let's just be mindful. It isn't about our names. It is about the name of Jesus, the only name that matters, the only name that is on the salvation, the only name that can truly bring you out of your iniquity and your sin um and that comes from repentance from your sin so let's be mindful of that as well uh let's be mindful that if there is anybody who is non-believers that we can truly handle our business in jesus name you feel me hallelujah hallelujah you feel me definitely in jesus name 
<laughs> Tanisha, I'm going to keep you in prayer. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? You must be having a bad day. God bless you, though. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep you in prayer. Yeah, I'm saying though. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna continue to keep it pressing, man. Like I said, if anybody has any prayer requests, you feel me? Let's let's drop them things below. Um share this if possible. You know, the more individuals who's able to lift these cities up in prayer, let's truly get that going as well. Uh anyone can join us for prayer and Bible study and hang out every Tuesday, Thursday at 10 a.m. at Truth Seekers YouTube and Facebook. Okay, boom, there you go right there. That uh, is that Pacific Standard Time. Uh, what time is that? Because not everybody is from California. Not everybody is from the same area or same state, Christy. So you need to drop the, the time and where you're located at so these individuals can make sure they make it. Um, but yeah, let's be mindful of what's going on. You feel what I'm saying? In Jesus' name, uh, we will definitely keep your son Jordan in prayer. Loretta, definitely we will lift him up in prayer in Jesus' name. Um. This is what this is about, man. Let's let's truly uh let's truly come together and show the unity in the body of Christ, man. Let's let's put whatever fear we may be having right now to the side, whatever situation or circumstance we're going through to the side, and let's truly let go and let God. I know at times it's easier said than done, but let's truly do it. He's giving us an opportunity through these times right now to truly grasp onto him. And truly be thankful to be called his children. And to truly give us the opportunity to be able to proclaim his name in these times. And so let's do so. Let's let's definitely come together, man. Let's enjoy our time together. Let's when we're doing these things, let's let's be mindful and intentional with what we're doing. You feel what I'm saying? And I encourage everybody right now, if there is something that has been taking you further away from the calling on your life um i encourage you to fast from it you know i encourage you during this time to take a fast whether it be from social media whether it be from tv whether it be from uh you know food whether it be from um you know just just senseless conversations whatever it may be that you know that has been distracting you from time that you should be spending with the father go to war against it Real life, fast, fast from it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm doing right now. Like I said, I, I have the opportunity to be able to fast from social media, you know, uh, fasting from food and certain things right now. So I'm going to be diligent and do so, so that I can grow closer to the Father, so it can amplify His voice. So there's, you know, there's distractions that I may have not even realized until I started truly fasting from these things in life and I, allowing the Lord to truly, you know, come and work on things with me and me just grow closer to him you know just even with my wife and my family and all of that just growing closer with them you feel me during these times and that's truly what i i truly encourage everybody to do if there is something that has been distracting you from the father and this downtime is giving you the opportunity to truly work on it and fast from it and go to war against it do so and do it in jesus name and allow him to give you the strength and draw your strength and faith and everything from him allow him to continue to press you forward you feel me and you'd be surprised how close and intimate you're going to grow with the Father. How much as you just right now studying your word and just truly giving your intimate time to him. How much the Father is going to open your eyes to a lot of things when it comes to even reading your word. And just even when it comes to your everyday life and things that you've been trying to accomplish. Just maybe you have had goals lately that you ain't been you know able to meet properly. Or maybe you just had you know relationships that you know what I'm saying you wanted to work on as far as you know with your brothers and sisters. Or you know just even with your children you know spending more downtime with them. And truly you know preaching the gospel to them. Um, I had a conversation with some brothers the other night and. You know, it is our job as fathers and husbands and leaders of our household to truly equip not just our children, but our wives, you know, for battle when it comes to being able to war against the enemy. You know what I'm saying? And we need to take that serious. We need to look at that like we look at everything else, you know what I'm saying, and fortifying our homes. Because, you know, it is out of pocket for us to be able to know how to go to war and fight the enemy. But then we're letting our children be attacked constantly when it comes to them not being able to preach the gospel, when it comes to them not being able to pray, when it comes to them not being able to identify, you know, when they are going through things and properly addressing the situations in a spiritual fight. We need to truly, you know, break that down to them when it comes to prayer and when it comes to just individuals knowing the gospel um, and just even all wives the same. Like, you know, it, it definitely is 
our jobs to be leaders over our household and to take every piece of our household as serious as we do in not committing adultery or as serious as we do in not, you know, putting our hands or using foul language towards our, our spouse or just even when it comes to raising our children up to be children of God. Like we need to take them things just as serious as we do not committing a sin. But we need to truly be building our family up and truly training them to go to war properly against the enemy when it truly comes to us having to battle him. Because at the end of the day, we give the enemy too much credit when it comes to everyday life. You know, everyday life is going to be what it is. But it is our duty when it comes to husbands and men of the household to be able to properly prepare our families to be to be able to address a situation properly and be able to truly deal with it when it comes to being um, you know, a woman of God or even, you know, children of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And in the times that we are in right now, it, you know, I can honestly say as being a father when it comes to, you know, having all daughters and just social media being involved, you feel me? It's easier said than done. But I do the best to my abilities to make sure that my children understand what is right from wrong, what is godly, what is not God, you know, what is not godly, Um, how to carry themselves as women of God. You know, and just preparing themselves for, you know, in the future when they are to get a husband. I don't talk to my daughters on the level that, you know, probably some men do. I talk to them in a manner because they've been exposed to a lot more. So, you know, I definitely give them the game on a different level when it comes to being women of God and, you know, their self-worth and what they should be striving for in being a, a woman of God and, you know, what they should be looking for when it comes to a husband, you know what I'm saying? And not that they need to worry about that right now, but that will be their future. You know, I'm not raising ratchets. I'm not raised in prostitutes. I'm not raising baby mamas. I'm raising queens. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and so I definitely am going to keep it thorough when it comes to conversating with my daughters on a level to where they understand, uh, you know, what they should be striving for and the self-worth that they should have within the father. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with my wife, you know. I definitely need to make sure that I'm pouring into her properly and making sure that she is prepared, you know, for, uh, let's say the Lord calls me home. I am not selfish, you feel what I'm saying? I want to make sure that I did the best to my abilities and what God has given me to lead my family, lead my wife, lead my children to where, you know, say the Lord uh, definitely gives her another opportunity to have a man of God. You know what I'm saying? At least I did my job while, you know, I was here. You feel me? And so that's something that I definitely do as well. And uh, during these times, we <laughs> that's that's what I'm really on, man. I just want to make sure that I do my job. I do my job as a father. I did my job as a, as a, a husband. I did my job as a leader. You know, it's easy to say these things. You know, actions speak louder than words. So the individual who's putting his hands to the plow and really putting that work in compared to the individual that's always talking, I want to make sure that I'm putting the work in because it's easy to, to always speak about something and not put, you know, your hands to the plow. You know, you do have great intentions when it comes to you being the man of God or the woman of God you are. But if all you're doing is talking and never getting it done, well, handle your business. Stop talking. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's time to it's time to put that work in. You feel me? Uh, like I said, again, man, let's let's take these times that God has given us. We know that they are unfortunate with finances. We know it's unfortunate with the jobs um, and us being on lockdown. But let's be mindful of what the times is, uh, you know, praying over each other, utilizing this time to build the relationships and show the unity in the body of Christ. I go through this every weekend. I'm going to continue to, you know. Definitely every prayer call, we're going to be promoting that as well. You feel me building within the brothers and sisters um, and truly making it happen and truly building. You feel what I'm saying? And getting it out. Um, definitely, you know, and uh, let this prayer call, like I said, drop your prayers. Any prayer requests, you can drop them. Anything personal, you can send to the messengers. Um, I personally been, you know, like I said, off of social media. I will be off for the next month. Um, so if you would like to get it in the other brothers or sisters right now, that would probably be the best. Um, I'm definitely trying to stay off of this as much as I can. Um, I will still be doing the prayer calls. I just won't be on social media other than that. Um, drop your links to your Bible studies, your churches, you feel me? Definitely in Jesus name. Um, let's truly be mindful, man. Let's, let's, like I said, let's not let this prayer call go to waste. If you truly been going through something, um, you know, drop it in the comment section, man. Give a prayer report as well. You feel me? This ain't just for prayer requests and stuff that is, you know, what you need. And this is also for you to, you know, boast on what the father has been doing lately for you. You feel me? 
This is also for encouragement. This is also to press each other forward. You feel what I'm saying? And like I said, I praise God for the fast I got to do. You feel me? And what he has given me. You feel me? So that's my prayer report. I'm going through this fast. Uh, I'm praying that I stay faithful to the fast. You feel what I'm saying? And honoring the Lord when it comes to the covenant that I made with him over this fast. And just, you know, truly growing closer to him intimately. You know what I'm saying? And all of that. So let's let's truly uh be mindful that this 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 prayer call for these cities, that's not just what it is. It's not about just that. It's prayer requests. It's, you know, just even uh, encouragement of what God has been doing in your life this last week. Bible study links, church links, uh, you know, if you need help breaking down what the gospel is, if you're lost, if you don't know the gospel, you know, it's all of these things. Let's let's allow this to be, you know, something that is fruitful every single weekend, not just on praying over these cities and these communities, but let's truly, you know, make it something that we can come together on, man. It's not don't be embarrassed to ask for prayer. Don't be shy because you're going through something. And like I said, if it's something personal, there's other brothers and sisters on here that if you need prayer, just shoot them a prayer. You ain't got to have a relationship for these individuals with them for you to ask for prayer. You feel what I'm saying? That's not what this is about. This is about us coming together and doing the best that we can to meet each other's needs. You feel what I'm saying? And so let's do that. So you feel me? Like I said, man, this is truly a blessing. Uh. And this is something that I can say that, you know, even this fast has helped me continue to do these. Like, you know, it is. Sometimes, you know, the flesh do be on me. You know what I'm saying? About, you know, what's the point of doing these? But then I also know, like, you know, I know what the point is of doing these. So I already know where that's coming from. That's coming from the flesh. And I'll be just laughing at it at times. Like, you know, it, you know, the flesh is seeking anything it can to rebel against God's call. It's, it's seeking self-worship. You know, it's just wanting to stroke itself, you know, whenever it can. So it's like, you know, I always do anything I can to go to war against it. Um, and also, I know that these that I'm denying the flesh on a bunch of different levels at this point when it comes to this fast. So I know that the flesh is going to definitely be doing anything it can to try to latch on to something to, you know, stay alive. So, you know, like I said, man, you know, at times, the flesh will ask me, why do I still even do these prayer calls? The flesh will try to tell me, you know, uh, when it comes to certain things I'm doing beyond the social media platform. Like, you know, what, what do you, for what? Well, for what is because God has given me the opportunity to. Because I don't know what seeds God is going to plant. I don't know what God is going to use me to do. But I have to be willing to be used for these things to happen. I have to make sure that I allow, you know, the Holy Spirit to move through me. I can't always, you know what I'm saying, be worried about what I'm going through. I got to look at the bigger picture, you know what I'm saying? Now, if there's certain things in my life that I know that aren't lining up with God's will, you know, or when it comes to his word, then, yeah, I definitely need to start cutting some things out, trimming that fat off. But when it comes to truly being intentional and honoring what God has blessed me to do, that's definitely what I'm going to do, you feel me? And I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm open for that call going to make sure I'm willing to put in that work. You feel what I'm saying? Um, we are truly blessed and we have it easy. And that's what God was showing me. Um, we have brothers and sisters across the country, across the globe right now being martyred for the exact same thing that we're doing right now freely. Um, and God was showing me that and how spoiled we are when it comes to what we have compared to what we're going through. Um, we don't have to hide to do this. There's individuals having to hide to be able to read their Bible. They're being put to death right now as we speak. Um, they're being martyred for believing in Jesus. And we complain and we have it way too easy at times. And that's what God was truly showing me lately this last week on how easy we have it and how we still complain and how we're still ungrateful. And how much that we are so undeserving of what we do have. And it truly is humbling. It was, it was truly humbling. And I, I thank God for showing me that. Because we do. We're super selfish when it comes to what we have to do for the Lord. Or, you know, when it takes away time of what we were trying to do instead of what God asked us to do. Um, and there's other individuals right now that are being martyred for it. And are happily doing whatever they can to still praise Christ and still go about their, 
day and not knowing if they're going to make it to the end of the day because, you know, they might get caught studying the Bible or, you know, whatever country they're in, the consequences of being beheaded or, you know, martyred for them even not denying Christ. And you got to think these individuals are being beheaded and asked to deny Christ and they won't deny Christ. And so they are martyred for believing in Christ. And we're sitting here right now still complaining about what God is asking us to do. Selfish about the things that God is asking. Like we have it hard or we're going through so much and it's like we're not going through as much as we think. And we got it a lot easier than we think we do. And the question is, are we really prepared for that? Are we prepared for the end times? The way that we speak about, you know, um, just even what's going on within the world right now. Uh, are you prepared for where this thing might go? That's what you need to sit back and ask yourself. Um... Are you truly prepared in your heart and growing cro growing closer and intimate to the Lord and being prepared for where this might go? Um, that's what you got to ask yourself. Because if we're complaining right now for the simple things that God has removed from us, for the simple things that we are truly, you know, going through right now, um, yes, they're unfortunate, but yes, this is things that God will bring us through. But you got to think there's somebody right now who's been going through this since they were born in a third world country that's been going through this same exact situation with no social media, with no car, barely any food and all of that. And they're still praising God every day to just be able to even have food. They're thankful that they were even chosen to be children of the Lord. It might get it might get martyred tomorrow. That's what we truly got to ask ourselves. Are we prepared for where this thing might go? And if it does, are you really secure when it comes to your faith? Are you ready to, if they ask you, are you really with the statement when it says, I'd rather die than deny? That's the true question. Like we got to be, we got to ask ourselves, are we prepared for where this might go? Because it's reality. These are things we can't just brush underneath the rug anymore. These are things we have to have real conversations about. Being organized and, and prepared that we can't control, definitely. And always make sure we call on the Lord. But why are we not prepping ourselves when it comes to being believers and really getting in our word and really truly getting spiritually closer to the Father and truly being prepared if these things go somewhere? Are you prepared for it? And it's easier to say yes than, you know, and it's easy to say words, but, you know, actions speak louder than words. My bad. <clears throat> A little internet connection. But, yeah, man, that's just my, my thoughts on where this might be going. And if we, if we truly consider ourselves to be believers in um, just loving each other, man, are we ready for where this thing might go? And are we preparing ourselves for where it might go? Are we prepared to still have fellowship beyond social media? Are we prepared to get in our word, you know, no matter the circumstances? Um, you know, are we praying for our brothers and sisters in these other countries? You know, that's what God was showing me. Like, are we truly praying for our brothers and sisters in other countries that are going through this every day, being martyred for them believing in Jesus and them just wanting to read their word and them having Bible studies like they're being martyred for it. Are we truly praying for them? That's what we need to start doing. And like I said, man, this live is for prayer requests, encouragement, edifying the body, the unity of Christ, like the hundred hoods movement. Like this is more than just one thing that we are using this prayer call every weekend for when it comes to the hundred hood movements i wanted this to be something that is edifying to the body of christ and that is truly us coming together and building a relationship um so let's do so man drop your prayer requests you know like i said drop your bible study links you know um drop the encouragement on what christ has done for you this week you feel me that too like man it let, let's boast in what the lord has done for us you feel me 
And I don't mean in a prideful manner, but I mean in a manner understanding that at the end of the day, we serve the most hard. Like I am blessed to be able to say that I am a believer. I am blessed. I'm honored to be called a child of the most high. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be boasting in that. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm not boasting in my own works. I'm boasting in what the spirit does. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's something I always do. And I will always make sure that I give credit to. Because at the end of the day, the only reason we are here right now is because of him. The only reason we are able to even do this live right now is because he ordained it. I don't believe in coincidences. That's something I don't. You feel what I'm saying? I believe in the Lord. I believe in ordained appointments. You feel me? And so I know that somebody on here is going to be touched by this live. I know that somebody on here is going to be receiving the seeds that have been planted. I know that somebody on here is needing to hear what is being spoken. So even if it is just one, thank the Lord, the job was done. See, I don't play the numbers game. I don't ever do that because I don't understand it is more valuable if even just one comes to the knowledge of who Jesus is and surrenders and submits themselves onto the Lord. I understand that. And so I don't ever look at the numbers game like, oh, man, Lord, you know, there was only this many people. And it's like, OK, for sure. I would rather it be that many people in the, in the number ratio of them being saved compared to the 500,000 doing shows. And every single person is still lost in their sin or still never grew any closer to the Lord. Like I've never been one for the numbers. I've never been one to care about social status. I've never been one trying to to seek an image or, you know, live a facade of a lifestyle to try to be something that I am not. You feel what I'm saying? I wasn't doing that when I was in the world. I'm not going to come over here and try to do the same thing. I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be who God has called me to be. Um, I know that this isn't everybody's cup of tea. I know that certain individuals may not like how I get down, may just not like me personally, how I look, the tattoos on his face, how he dresses, how, how could he be saved, he looks like he's of the world, like, you know, I suggest you study that word, because I've heard that scripture a lot more than others, um, it, he looks like he's of the world, like, really study the word and ask yourself what that scripture truly means, you know what I'm saying, so that's, that's something that I'm willing to, to, you know, to take on the, uh, to take on the chin, like, you know, I, this just didn't start happening, but I'm still going to go forth. I'm still going to preach the gospel. I'm still going to pray over these communities. I'm still going to share, you know, the good news and what Christ has done for us. You feel me? And, and truly he is the only way. So that is never going to stop. You know, like I said, uh, it is what it is. You know, that will never stop. You know, like I said, man, I got individuals that hit my DMs all the time with some of the most craziest stuff. You feel what I'm saying? And I pray for him because I understand that's their opinion. You feel me? And maybe truly in their heart because of how I look or how I conduct myself. Maybe these individuals do feel like there is something behind the scenes. But now nah, this is really what you get. You feel me? I've lived life with a bunch of individuals as far as that have been in this a very long time. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't <laughs> I don't got the time to try to, you know, play make believe you know what i'm saying i don't get down like that you know this isn't this isn't beneficial to me to be something that god hasn't called me to be you feel me and at the end of the day just to be 1000 with y'all i'm not benefiting off anything that is happening and i'm making sure that i don't ever put myself in that category because it isn't me who saves it isn't me who does anything righteous it is only the spirit that works through me so it's not me who is even jumping on here trying to do any of this like i'm just doing what god has asked me to do i'm just making sure that i'm being open to what the lord has asked me and ordained me to make sure that i handle my business on so with that being said let's definitely like i said take these opportunities to truly reach out to one another drop your prayer requests drop your encouragement um, we just we prayed over the cities of Vallejo, California and Fairfield, California. Um, Vallejo, California is where I gave my life to the Lord, where the Lord had drew me to him. Um, and that was like 12 years ago. I gave my life to the Lord in the in the crest on the, uh, the Rally Cuheen porch steps like 11, 12 years ago. That's part of my testimony. A lot of people may not know that, but yeah. So Vallejo, California is definitely, uh, I would say a special place as far as in my book, when it comes to not just my walk with Christ, I was out there before, uh, I was ever saved, you know, kind of 
partaking in the sinful nature of the flesh when it comes to just being in the streets and doing other things. You know, the city is only about 45 minutes away from Sacramento. So um, we used to slide out there, you know what I'm saying, get it in on whatever occasion may have been, you know, at the time. So Vallejo, California is definitely a special place for me when it comes to my walk with Christ and just where it all started for me being led to the Lord, uh, you know, by my older brother and just even Q him being there to be a witness of what God, had, you know, was doing that night in my life and what he has been doing. Um, Fairfield, California is also a special place. Um, I used to always go over there. I think it's called Grande Circle or there's a neighborhood over there that's like a circle. It's almost like a want to say it's like almost shaped like a horseshoe or something like that. It's like some little projects, some apartments. Uh, I used to go out there and pray all the time at the little candlelight vigils when I first came to the Lord. Uh, and that's also a special place for me, man, because uh, a lot of the situations out there within the Bay Area are just going out there to pray on the corners and all of that, man. That was a lot of the first things I started doing when it came to ministry and just street evangelism and really getting out there and sharing the love of Christ and praying over the community. So it's a blessing to be here 11, 12 years later. Um, I would be lying to you if I told you it was easy. I would be lying to you if I told you this was a cakewalk. I'd be lying to you if I told you I ain't feel short. Um, I have bumped my head many a times along this walk. You feel me? I feel short plenty of times. I'm not afraid to say it. Um, I definitely make sure that I share and am transparent with everything that I've been through so that other brothers don't make the same mistakes. Um, a lot of it had to do with selfish pride and mistakes that I was making, feeling like I was further than I was within my walk, spiritually, uh, mentally, physically, you know, just even where it comes with me and the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Being able to fight these battles properly. I wasn't fighting them properly. I was catering to the flesh more than I was the father at times. So, you know, like I said, man, I have no issue putting my business out there when it comes to being transparent so that other brothers and sisters don't make the same mistakes. You feel what I'm saying? We are here to edify each other, help each other build, help each other grow. Um, and if my if my mistake and my, me falling somewhere short within my sin can help you not fall short in your walk, I will definitely put that on the table in Jesus' name because that's truly what this is all about. How could we build and edify each other when we see somebody about to step in a a bear trap, a snare, you know, they call them. And if we see that and we know that that's where an individual is walking towards and about to step in it, how dare us not share and be transparent with the experience that we had when we were walking in the same direction they were and we fell victim to the bear trap that the enemy had placed. But also the same trap that was there, we fell victim to because it was our own selfish, sinful ignorance that we had against the father acting like that we had control over what we we're doing in life at that time. A lot of the times that's what happens is we let go of God and we grab a hold of the flesh. And then all of a sudden when we when we step in this trap, we understand how we got here afterwards, but we didn't even need to get here. We didn't even need to continue on that path. We, there, we weren't going to step in this trap if we would have stayed on the path that God asked us to. And that's the problem is that a lot of us begin to let go of what Christ wants from us. We begin to grab on what we think our needs are. And then once again in the word, it says to lean on God's understanding, lean on Christ's understanding, not our own. So that's what happens is we begin to veer off the path and then we fall victim to the trap. And wondering how we got here is not anything that is rocket scientists how we got here is because we begin to pick up our burdens and act like we had everything under control and what is crazy is we had already knew what our life was before christ and knew that we had nothing under control so that's where we begin to fall uh you know victim to the sinful flesh and the ignorance of the flesh and being deceived by it is because our life was already in shambles we was already living in hell. We was already stuck in darkness before we knew Christ. We had nothing good going for us. You feel me? When it came to spirit, we were spiritually dead. You know what I'm saying? And then we begin to let go of the only thing that is keeping us alive. You feel me? And that is the Lord. That is Christ. That is the spirit navigating us through these times. And then when we let go and we fall victim and fall into this trap, it was our own sinful ignorance and our selfish pride that got us to that point because if we can truly think back to where we were before we were with christ we had nothing good going for us anyway we were spiritually dead anyway and so that's where the ignorance comes along when it comes to the flesh is beginning to let go of god and the spirit navigating us and grabbing onto our own wants and needs and acting like we can handle this when we already were shown to have failed without christ you know what i'm saying and so that's where i be really looking at myself at is like man 
we've already been down this road. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Before I was with the Lord, you was, you know, your life was in shambles. Let's not even go there. You feel me? So that's what you got to start doing, man, is understanding where you were before you were with the Lord. And what were you, what, where, where were you really at? Like success wise, when it comes to the flesh or whatever it is. And I don't care how much money you had, what your house looked like, anything like that. Where were you spiritually? You were spiritually dead without the Lord. And you had no ability to gain heaven by yourself. You cannot gain salvation through your own works. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's what we need to be mindful of. And that's what I'm getting at is do not let go of Christ right now and begin to feel like you can go do a bunch of things in his name and you're going to make it to heaven. You feel what I'm saying? It doesn't work like that. Be mindful of your situation. Be mindful of what Christ is doing through you. Be mindful of the spirit navigating you through these paths right now. And do not let go of God and begin to think you can do this on your own. You feel me? You will fall every single time. It is a guarantee. You will definitely fall short. You feel what I'm saying? You will end up in the same situation you was before you was with him. You will slowly but surely be spiritually dead. You will slowly but surely fall back into the same sin you was at. Next thing you know, you at the same vomit pile. You know what I'm saying? You left. Be mindful of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, prayer request. I'm going to keep encouraging brothers and sisters to drop your prayer request. You feel me? Drop your prayer request. Drop what Christ has been doing through you and for you through the week you would be surprised on how much it helps your brothers and sisters you would be surprised on how much individuals are able to feed off of the faith that you have in christ let's not be selfish let's not act like we know what's best for the body because that's what we excuse me that's what we do at times we begin to be like well you know what is that going to do for somebody or you know how is that going to help them you're not God. So you don't have, you know what I'm saying, the answer to that. You know what I'm saying? But definitely make sure that you throw it out there. What God has did for you this week. Throw it out there. What you're struggling with. You feel me? All of these things so that we know what to pray for or that somebody who may be going through something similar to your situation can see what God did through you and helping you pull you through that. And they could even ask a question. You know, what was you praying for? What was you going through at that time? What scriptures was you studying? You know, what was your regimen as far as fasting? Whatever it may be, let's allow this to be a training course. Let's allow this to truly be what God has, you know, asked us for this to be when it comes for us being family members and building off each other and truly being who we need to be. You feel me? And that's really what it is. That's why I be transparent with y'all. That's why I tell y'all when it comes to me fasting. Or I give my apology when it came to me not, you know, posting today as far as reminding everybody about, you know, the prayer call. Because that was my fault. I chose to fast, but I still need to help my, uh, I need, I still need to, you know, do what I told the Lord I would do, you know. And, and that was okay. Okay, fast from these things, but still do the prayer call. And I really am fasting. So my apologies once again. Um, uh, functioning spiritual relationships. Yes, we do. Brandon, we definitely need definitely healthy and functioning spiritual relationships um and we need to make sure that we are being mindful of that too with the brothers and sisters that we are building with um and i say that because at the end of the day i understand when it comes to accountability or individuals that you are building with make sure that you guys don't have the same struggles make sure that you guys don't have the same things that are going to be easy for you guys to fall with when it comes to trying to build with each other and i and that goes for brothers as well some brothers may struggle you know uh when it comes to money or when it comes to that street life or whatever and it's going to be harder for two individuals that have the same struggle to hold each other accountable than it is for an individual who doesn't have the struggle so i always try to be mindful when i pick my accountability partners or anybody who is pouring into my life on that uh topic or whatever the issue may be that i'm going through that that individual doesn't struggle with that 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 individual isn't biased to keeping and holding me accountable to that because I want this individual to not have the same struggle that I do because who knows, I may accidentally be causing my brother to stumble in the same area because he was trying to keep it real with me or he will, you know, I'm going to help you or whatever it is. But in all reality, should have just kept it real and been like, hey, I got the same, you know, I got the same struggle. Probably ain't going to be the best for me to hold you accountable in this area. Because at times we can drag each other down too. So we need to be mindful of that. And not saying that, you know, prayer and the Lord can't bring y'all through this. I'm just saying I've gone through this long enough to know, you know, a lot of the time we will we will want to talk with an individual who can relate more. And we're more comfortable with an individual who may be going through the same struggle at that time. 
but be mindful it's not really healthy for both of you guys to try to hold each other uh, accountable. You know what I'm saying? Because slowly but surely, without you guys knowing it, there will be a time that you guys may fall together because of the weakness that you guys have for whatever the struggle is. And like, like I said, I don't know what it is. It could be money. It could be... Uh, you know, you guys catting off on social media, you know what I'm saying, not knowing how to, you know, express yourselves, you know, without being rude or, you know, just egotistic when it comes to being online, whatever it may be. Like, everybody has their own struggles. I just know what helped me, you know, and being transparent would help me is making sure that I have individuals that don't have the same struggles as me because these individuals aren't going to cater to my yes. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know. That's just something that I, I did when it came to my accountability and came to my struggles, man. I don't want somebody that got the same struggles as me because they're not going to, you know, I, I don't want to cause them to stumble. You know what I'm saying? And then really what it does cause you to do is at the end of the day, you will slowly but surely begin not to call them all the time because you don't want to cause them to stumble. So it's almost a catch-22 in a, in a you know, in a phase like because, you know, you may be going through something and then you know they have a similar struggle. So you may not want to even to reach out for the help or the prayer that you need in Jesus name. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's not healthy to neither one of y'all situations. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, just call on Christ, man, and be mindful. And when he ordains you with the accountability or the brothers and sisters that you're building with, you know, um, just be mindful of the times that we're in and what God is asking us to do. You know what I'm saying? What God is asking us to do in Jesus' name. You feel me? And what he truly wants us, you know, doing in these times. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has an agenda. But let's make sure that we are handling our business on the agenda that he has given us. You know, we got plenty of time to be in his word right now. We got plenty of time to be fellowshipping. We got plenty of time to be growing closer to him intimately with our family, uh, praying over the communities that we know are going through it, as well as our own praying for the body of Christ, lifting up the brothers and sisters that are in third world countries that are being martyred for the same thing that we are doing right now openly. These individuals would love to be able to worship God and praise him in the manner that we are doing right now. And they're being martyred just for having a Bible study or for believing in Christ across the globe right now so let's pray for our brothers and sisters as well that are going through situations and circumstances that is 10 times worse than we could ever even imagine or even fathom and so uh, let's truly be mindful of what these prayer calls are let's be mindful that to not be shy when it comes to the prayer requests or the encouragement and what Christ has truly done for you throughout the week. Like I said, you don't know how much that means to somebody else. You don't know what the Lord will do when you plant that seed. So do not allow the enemy to make you fearful or, you know, what what he has the capability to do. God is God. He is the creator of all. So don't ever try to limit something that is limitless. That's something you need to understand. God cannot be limited. He is limitless in all that he does. So do not look at him like that. You know what's best for what you're doing for the situation or the circumstance at hand. You don't. He does. That's why it says don't lean on our own understanding. And it also is for situations like this. Don't take away for the glory that he has done in your life because you feel shy or because you don't want to be transparent or because you don't necessarily want to put something out there that is personal. Like I said, whether you're putting it out there to be personal or whether you're putting something out there that God could use to help. Always remember, you don't know what God can do or you. So if it's something that's personal, I respect it. Pray on it. Maybe you can give a little piece of the situation. Um, you know, just always be mindful, man. Do not put a limit on God because he is limitless. There is no limit on what he can do with us, let alone our lives, let alone our walks, let alone with the seeds he is trying to use to plant. So let's be mindful of that. You know what I'm saying? And let's always keep in mind of what he can do. You know what I'm saying? He is the creator of all. He is the most high, you feel me? So, like, we got to give God the respect that is due, the praise that he has deserved, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? In everything we do, and thank God for it, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to give these next 10 minutes um, for everybody, men, to drop their, you know, drop their prayer requests, um, drop your church links, you know, live streaming on Sundays. Bible study links, uh, you know, if you want to 
give a praise report on what happened this week, you know, to you and what God has done. That is more, that is welcome as well. Um, this is another weekend for the Pray For My Hood, 100 Hoods. Even though we can't be there physically, we are going to continue to pray over these communities and over these cities. They're just being postponed until the rest of the year is up, until they let us off. We will continue to run it back to these cities once all the other cities are done. We are not going to basically reschedule anything throughout the year. We're going to finish up the, you know, the 100 Hood movement as desired, you know, once this is this little sanction is up, this little quarantine thing, and then we are going to continue to finish up the hoods that we didn't get a hit at the end of the year. Um, so they're just being postponed. But let's be mindful of that, man. Let's continue to pray over these cities. I know that tomorrow is going to be Oakland, California, and Frisco, San Francisco, California. So them two cities is what we'll be praying over tomorrow. I will definitely, during the day, make sure that I... Uh, I'll post a flyer. Like I said, I've been fasting. I forgot to post a flyer today. I won't do it again because I'm still doing the prayer calls and I want them to definitely be something that, you know, as many people can be involved in as well. Because like I said, it's not just for the prayer call for the cities. This is the prayer call for us as the body of Christ, uh, for individuals who is lost, for the fellowship, you know, um, for to drop your, you know, your, your church links. If they're live streaming on Sundays, your Bible study links, whatever it is, um, you know. That is what this is for as well. And for us to make sure that we are edifying the body of Christ, we're growing closer. We're showing the unity of the body to the world. You know what I'm saying? So let's just be mindful of all of that in Jesus name. Um, and like I said, man, uh, there's we got 10 minutes. Drop your prayer request. You feel me? Don't be shy. Drop your, uh, your, your, your praise reports, man. What the Lord has done for you this week. Drop what maybe you be going through. Um, that the Lord is working on right now. Uh, if you're fasting, what are you fasting from, man? Like, let's allow this to not be a a prayer call or just even a conversation that we get to have with each other that is, you know, not edifying or let alone we are not doing the best of our abilities to be able to honor God in, you know, all of the aspects that we can when it comes to this live. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I, that's what I try to do now is be more intentional. Like, okay, Deuce, what can you do to be more intentional with this prayer call? Well, then let's not just make it for the hundred hoods. Let's make it for the body. Let's make it for the encouragement. Let's make it for, you know, us to grow closer as brothers and sisters. Like, you know, this is why I said this is why I'm encouraging everybody, excuse me, to make sure that this is more than just praying over the cities and the communities. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of things we can do to utilize this technology every weekend. You feel me? Um, let alone throughout the week. But I'm utilizing it during the weekend. So, you know, what I'm saying. Let's do this. You feel me in Jesus name. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, hallelujah. And we going to continue to get it in. You feel me until they pull the plug on the uh you know what I'm saying until they pull the plug on the social media, until the government hit the button. You feel me? We going in. And even after it hit the button, we going in. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? In Jesus name. You know what I'm saying? So let's get it in. You feel me? But I'm letting y'all now know now if they pull the plug, man. You know, and next time I hit the live, when it comes back and you see the face paint, you feel me? And, you know, I got the little Natty Dreads from the 300, you know what I'm saying? You know, and I'm rocking a little, a little teeth necklace, a little rabbit teeth necklace, you feel me? Don't ask no questions, just know I've been out there, you feel me? Nah, I'm just joking with y'all, but yeah, man, be prepared, because you never know, you feel me? Do you know how to filter water through the charcoal? You know what I'm saying? Do you know how to start a fire? What's really going on with you? That's what you need to be asking yourself right now. Can, can you survive off the bare necessities out there in the land? Oh, man, God bless y'all. I truly do love y'all, man. It's always a blessing to be able to fellowship with the brothers and sisters, man. In Jesus' name, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? We definitely going to keep it uh, serious when we honor in the Lord. Uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure that, you know, it doesn't become super dry. You know what I'm saying? And I don't begin to sound like the clear eye guy. You feel me? Super monotone. You know what I'm saying? Every commercial. You know what I'm saying? Saluting. God bless that brother. But sometimes I don't even, I can't even stand the commercials. Like, Lord, forgive me. Uh, we going to keep you definitely in prayer, brother, uh, for your struggles. Uh and for the three years that, uh, you know what I'm saying, you've been free uh, within your sobriety. Uh, Justin, I can't pronounce your last name, bro. I'm going to butcher it, so I'm going to just leave it at that. You feel me? But we're going to definitely keep you in prayer. Uh, God bless you, bro. Appreciate, you know what I'm saying, your transparency and putting your prayer requests out there. Uh, we definitely will lift you up. And I pray that in Jesus' name, he continues to navigate you uh, through these times. 
and he's your strength and he just continues to give you the faith to press through um and understanding that's why we have to draw our strength from christ because beyond him it is impossible to get through these circumstances and situations that we are tried with in everyday life you know and just even struggling with things that we do when it comes to sin and just uh how wicked the flesh really is and how deceiving it is so i i continue to lift you up in prayer bro and just uh pray that you press on and pray that you truly ground yourself within the faith that God has placed inside you with the Holy Spirit and understanding that he will get you through these things. But you must call on him. Um, and that's that's the biggest thing is we must pray to the Lord and we must ask for his guidance. and We must ask him to be our strength and we must stand firm within the faith that we have and, and believing that he will get us through um, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. But see it, man. Y'all don't y'all don't be shy. You feel me? There's five minutes left. Who else got a praise report? Who else got a prayer call? You know what I'm saying? Let's be mindful of that. You feel me? Let's let let's put it out there. Let's be mindful. Um, you know what I'm saying? And let's get it in. You feel me? Don't be shy. And like I said, this has nothing to do with names. Hog mob, uh, pray for my hood, the hunter hood movement. Like this has nothing to do with names. We are not here. For any self-promotion, we are not here for self-worship. We are here for the one and only name of Jesus Christ, the only name that saves, the only name that will get, uh, will, will have salvation. That is the only name that carries salvation, but the only way to get to it is to repent for your sins and to truly accept Christ into your heart. You feel what I'm saying? And it's more than just that. It is truly a process after that. Um, you know, and, and if, if you would like that broken down to you, what the gospel is, if you're, you know, if you're somebody who is lost. Um, we will definitely break that down for you. There's plenty of brothers and sisters that could do so. Um, do not be shy. Don't be fearful in reaching out if you do have any questions. That's also another thing. You know, it, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. And that's just like a saying, you know what I'm saying? But but it's it's truth. Like if individuals don't know what you're going through or, or don't know your needs, then how can they be met? Now, the father knows your needs. But if you're not truly asking your brothers and sisters, you know, what to pray for or, you know, if there's a need that need to be met, you know what I'm saying? There's not there's not much we can't do when it comes to us being your brother and sister or just even in the body of Christ. You would be surprised when you're a transparent and there is a need and how fast the Lord will come and meet that need by you just being diligent and being honest about what you're going through. Whether it's prayer, whether it's financial stability, uh, you know what I'm saying, what, whatever it may be, you feel me? But you have to open your mouth. You have to you know, truly believe in God and have faith that he will meet that need in whichever way he chooses to, you know, honor him for that, you know, and be thankful. Like I said, and, you know, let's not be fearful in that. Let's, you know, what I'm saying honor the Lord in any way we can. And so that's truly what this is for, man. Um, We got probably so we got four more minutes for the prayer requests. Um. The prayer calls, like I said, uh, if you would like to build with any of the brothers or sisters, Bible study links, uh, Sunday live links, whatever it may be, um, you can drop them, you know, in the comments. Like I said, man, uh, you know, let's definitely be mindful that, you know, Christ meets all of our needs. You feel me? Um, so whatever we're going through right now, let's be edifying to the body of if you have a praise report, drop that as well. If you got something that the Lord is working with you on and you need prayer for that, drop that. You feel what I'm saying? Like I told y'all, I was transparent. I'm fasting, you know, uh, from social media except for the prayer call. So if I don't get back to you during the week, that is really the reason why I've truly, you know, disconnected from this for the next month. Um, I forgot to post today about the prayer call because that's how much I'm trying to take this serious. I want to definitely, uh, you know, do what I can. Uh, Jason. Jason was mobbing with my brother. I love you, bro. I see you, man. I'm praying for you and the family, man. Uh, you know, the Lord is going to continue to, uh, you know, bless you. You know what I'm saying? For the diligence and you being faithful to what he has blessed you with, with your family and being a husband and leading your household, bro. Um, you know, definitely we've sat it down, chopped it up about your testimony. Keep pressing forward, bros. I understand, you know, uh, the dynamics and the struggles that do come with being over here. You feel me? And, uh, you know, it is what it is, though. You know, true warriors are going to prevail in the kingdom. And God will continue to give you the strength to fight these battles in Jesus' name. You know, salute, bro. I'm going to lift you up, man. Um, but yeah, man, let's be, let's be 1,000 with each other. Like I said, with our, with our, you know, our trials and tribulations, man, whatever we going through, uh, in Jesus' name, 
You know what I'm saying? Let's just be honest. Let's be transparent. Like I said, we don't know what the Lord is going to take to use for his glory and another brother or sister that may be going through something. So let's drop these prayer requests. Let's drop uh, this encouragement. You know what I'm saying? Whatever God has brought you through. Um, if you guys would like fellowship when it comes to having a brother, sister, the fellowship, you know, the Bible studies, uh, you know, Sunday live streams and what your churches are doing. Um, like I said, you know, this is an open uh, platform for that. I definitely don't want this just to be the hundred hoods movement, because even though we have to postpone the prayer walks, I will be doing prayer calls every weekend for these cities until they let us off this lockdown. But let's definitely utilize these lives uh, and technology in a manner to honor Christ. There is enough negativity nonsense and individuals making memes and just senseless conversation about what's going on in the times that we have today within the world so let us take the opportunity to utilize this for us to you know preach the gospel pray over individuals post scripture you know what i'm saying uh let us do that let us not take part in the nonsense that is going on on social media um you know, and just everyone who is just being negative about the situations that is going on. Let our faith shine brighter than it ever has in Christ. Let us make sure that we continue to stand firm on the word and the promise that he has given us of never forsaking us as his children in Jesus name. And let's continue to make sure that we are bold within the faith that he has placed inside of us and allow the spirit to continue to navigate us through what we're going through. Let's take that authority over truly what is going on on social media and just the times that we have now let us do that man there's enough uh individuals out there right now that are negative and you know senseless conversations and making fun of you know uh the 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 virus or whatever this may be right now that is running around here uh you know and basically terrorizing the world and got everybody in fear let us be the ones that let our you know Let's shine the bright in the darkness, man. Let's continue to shine the love of Christ. Let us spread his love. Let us spread the gospel as much as we can. Let us pray over, you know, every person that we come encounter with, man. Let us be, you know, intentional with everything that God has given us right now, man, in Jesus name. Um, I truly love y'all, man, and God bless y'all for everybody tuning in. Tomorrow I will post. It'll be 730 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for everybody who wants to tune in tomorrow. Um, I will post during the day. Like I said, I've been fasting off social media. I'm going to do it for the rest of the month, but I'm going to still do the prayer calls and that's it. So I'll post tomorrow to remind everybody. Uh, so from Friday to Sunday, I'll make sure I post about the prayer walks. They'll be the same time every weekend, 730 uh, Pacific Standard Time. So 730 p.m. Um, you can tune in every weekend. Uh, Friday through Sunday, we're going to have a prayer call through the cities and the Hunter Hood movements that we can't hit, let alone this will also be a spot for you to um, drop your prayer requests. If you're seeking fellowship, if you need prayer, uh, praise reports on whatever the Lord is doing with you, fellowship with brothers and sisters. If you need fellowship when it comes to Bible studies or even a church, uh, you know, what I'm saying a church home, the live streams, brothers and sisters can drop them as well. So, you know, I truly love you. all I salute to you. all I'm going to pray this out, man. And I pray, you know, prayerfully, everybody will continue to have a blessed night in Jesus name. You know, um, honor the time to the father that he has given you. Get with your family, man. Uh, sit down at the table and eat dinner. You know, what I'm saying if you haven't been doing that, you know, just truly build the memories uh, with your family in Jesus name that God is allowing you to do through these times you feel me and let's truly hold each other accountable and what we need to be doing out here man um you know don't forsake these times that god has given us this is truly a blessing you know what i'm saying and, and we are honored to be able to do what we can for the father we are so undeserving of the positions that he has placed us in and it's only because of his unmerited love and his sacrifice and why we're here right now so i truly salute to all y'all man i love y'all in jesus name i'm gonna pray out you feel me? And uh, we're going to tune in tomorrow, man, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We will be lifting up Oakland, California and San Francisco, California in prayer because um, we can't be there physically. But doesn't mean we can't be there spiritually and still lift up these cities in prayer in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, Lord, and I ask that this live was honoring to your name, Lord. I pray that it was glorifying to you, Lord, and all that you do for us, Lord. Um, I pray for the cities of Vallejo, California and Fairfield, California, Lord, that seeds were planted on behalf of you, Lord. I pray that we continue to be diligent and intentional with these lives that we're doing when it comes to the prayer calls for the Hunter Hood movement, Lord, when it comes to the edifying of the body of Christ, uh, when it comes to the fellowship, 
being able to give uh, brothers and sisters the opportunity to be transparent about things that they may have be struggling with, about praise reports, whatever it is, Lord, allow this live to be edifying to you. Allow the seeds that were uh, planted to fall on fertile ground, Lord. Allow us to continue to be bold in our faith, Lord. Allow the brothers and sisters who may be more weak in the faith right now, Lord, to draw the strength from the brothers and sisters who are strong in their boldness of the faith right now, Lord. And let us not look at each other and point any fingers, Lord, because we are all part of the body, but let us build with each other. Let us, you know what I'm saying, make sure that we are building each other up. Let us continue to pour into each other, Lord. Let us continue to make sure that we are edifying to your name as well as showing the unity and the boldness of Christ, Lord, when it comes to your body. Lord, let us make sure that we are honoring your name with everything we do, Lord, when it comes to these social media platforms, Lord, or it comes to everyday life, Lord, let us make sure that we are praying for the lost, praying for individuals who are going through these times without you to call on, Lord. Let our boldness of our faith, Lord, and our actions speak louder than our words so that these individuals may ask why we are at peace with everything. Well, the only way we can be at peace is the peace that you have given us. So that gives us an opportunity to proclaim your name and the gospel to these individuals who truly need to hear it during these times, Lord. And we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for this life. We thank you for the brothers and sisters that tuned in, Lord. Like I said, I'm not big on numbers. I'm not big on social status. All I care about is that your will has been done, Lord. And I don't care if it was only one person tonight, Lord, who was touched and edified by what has gone forth of what you have used us to do tonight, Lord, because it wasn't just me. There was a bunch of other brothers and sisters on here praying for these cities, uh, praying for the brothers and sisters within this live, dropping their prayer requests, you know, so I just thank you and honor you, Lord, in giving us this opportunity to come forth and do this for the kingdom, Lord. And we truly thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all, man. I pray that y'all have a blessed night in Jesus' name, man. Take this time to be with your families. Definitely pray over your family, man. Uh, spend this intimate time with the Lord and your families, man. Truly make memories right now. Don't allow the times at hand to get you in fear. The only thing we should be in fear of is the Lord. And we understand through his faith and believing in him, we have nothing to fear. God is never going to forsake us. He will always be there by our side and he will continue to navigate us through these times. So hit your knees every morning and seek him first. And everything else will fall into place. Allow your faith and your boldness to be what speaks before you open up your mouth. Allow your actions to speak louder than your words. And give everybody an opportunity that you come across. If they would like prayer, if they would like to hear the gospel, if they even need fellowship. Let's truly get it in, man. In Jesus' name, man. Let's not take these times lightly. Let's truly take them. Let's honor God with everything that he has given us. Waking us up in the morning and placing oxygen within our lungs. Let's get it. You feel me? In Jesus' name, man. Salute. I love y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed night. Hallelujah.